Hey guys, Brandon here from Hybrid Fitness, and today I've got another strongman video for you. This time it's my 10 favorite moments throughout the sports history. Uh, these moments here, these are ones that have inspired me every single day to try and be better at what I do every day. And I hope maybe this sparks a little bit of something in you, a little bit of inspiration to, to strive to do the same thing. And also I hope it sheds a little bit of a light on a side of the sport that's not necessarily seen all the time. And this is the mental aspect of it, which is huge in the sport. And unless you watch a sport every day, you might not notice or understand some of it. So I'll try to do my best throughout this video to explain why some of these are impress as impressive as they are. So at number 10, we got Tom Stoltman breaking his own Atlas Stone world record. So for this event, Tom had to pick an Atlas Stone up from the floor up over a 48 inch platform and on over to the other side. He did so by doing a 286 kilogram or 629 pound stone from the floor up over. And the impressive, the really impressive part about it is one, he broke his own world record. So he was already the best in the world at this. He was just setting it so far ahead of what anyone else in the sport right now can even come close to. But the real impressive part is how easy he made it look. He did two warm up sets going into this in the third stone, which is the 286 world record stone. He did it without even breaking a sweat. You know, usually you see guys put it in their lap for a while and really gear up to get that thing up over the bar. Tom pretty much one motions the stone up over the 48 inch platform. And it just goes to show that there is no ceiling to what Tom can do when it comes to the stones or in the sport in general. He's a monster of a human, he's six foot eight. When he did this record attempt, I believe he was right around 360 pounds. So he's massive human, he's got these huge long arms to wrap around the stone with, which is a big advantage when it comes to Atlas stone lifting. You know, if usually if you see guys with short little arms, they really struggle on the stones because you really got to wrap around them. If you don't have a good grip on it, obviously you're not going to be able to lift it very well. Yeah, Tom has stated that he wants to go for a 300 kilogram stone, which would make him the first person to ever do so. And there's, after watching the 286, I think he could have done it that day. There's no doubt, and I don't think in anyone's minds, that he will get that 300, pound, 300 kilogram stone whenever he feels like doing it. Let's see this. Let's go, Tom. So easy to the lap again. So he's just comfortable. Come on, Tom. He's up. Come on, Tom. He's up. He's over and he's cleared it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Number one, baby. Wow. <laughs> number one, baby. He says, indeed, he's number one. Uh, that was far too easy for a world record. Uh, I wanted to see blood. I wanted to see sweat and tears. And Tom's just plopping it over like it's a pebble. So at nine, we've got Odie Wilson losing the World's Strongest Man on the final event. Now, you might think, why is this on here if he lost? It's the way he lost in kind of a moment that I guess isn't so inspirational, but it goes, for me, in a way it kind of is. You know, Odie was the strongest man in the world in 1990 when this event, competition took place. Going into the final event, Odie had a five and a half point lead over three time, a time three-time winner, John Paul Sigmerson. Now, five and a half points may not seem like a whole lot, but going into a final event of a competition, that's a huge amount of points to make up for whoever's in second place. You know, everyone pretty much thought Odie had the title in hand until the final event came forward. It had nothing to do with strength whatsoever. It was an endurance event. Competitors had to throw a stack of bricks onto their back and run around a 200 meter track. And whoever finished it first or quickest won the event. Now, John Paul Sigmerson, who was in second place behind Odie in the competition, much leaner, smaller competitor, much more athletic, where Odie was a massive man weighing in right around 400 pounds. So the event was much more suited towards John Paul Sigmerson, and there's some controversy around of whether or not the World's Strongest Man organizers made this event to get John Paul Sigmerson the win. I won't get into all that, but... Odie Wilson was robbed at the end of the 1990 World's Strongest Man competition. Unfortunately, Odie came in last place in the event and actually lost his title to John Paul Sigmerson for his, for his personal fourth win. And it's, it's unfortunate to see because, you know, Odie never got a chance to really come back and go for another title as in 1991 after this competition he passed away due to cardiac arrest. And so we never really got to give him the, the credit he deserved for how strong he was in 1990. John Paul Sigmerson simply has to win this event and in under 52 seconds to stand any chance of winning the competition. That's right, and Odie must finish 12 seconds behind him to win the title. But the bricks are looking very low on Odie's bike. 
He wants to get them really high on his shoulders. It looks like he's pacing himself, but I don't know whether it's enough. But it looks like Odie's more than 12 seconds behind him. The other competitors are running over, trying to spur Odie on and make him run faster. It's a struggle. Let's see how the time is. Oh, no. John Paul's the champion. Oh, what a cruel way to lose. Odie must be devastated. I'm not taking anything away from Simpson, but I feel within myself, within myself, that when it comes down to pure strength, I am the strongest man on this planet. I may not be able to run. I may not to jump over a bus, but I can move anything on this planet. And I'm coming back to this competition if I'm invited. And I promise you that I will be standing in number one. All right, at number eight, we've got Mikhail Shivlikov breaking the Masters deadlift world record. Shivlikov deadlifted 436 kilograms, or 961 pounds, which is incredible to begin with, but the real part of it is when he was deadlifting it, his body violently begins to shake, he starts to bounce, blood's pouring out of his nose. Most guys, I don't know if there's anybody else in the sport actually that would have been able to hold on to the bar and lock out that deadlift. And again, that kind of goes more towards the, the mental side that people don't see from strongman athletes all the time is there's a huge mental part of it. He, like I said, most other athletes would have dropped that bar and not completed the rep. But mikhail has got no, no quit in him whatsoever. I've seen competitions where he's competed hurt, he's had injuries, he's fallen behind in the standings early on in competitions. And he always finds a way to fight back and get towards the top there. And this is just a, the best example, I think, of his whole career here at this Masters Deadlift World Record. As you'll see in the video, his body, he can't control what's going on inside his body. He literally is, looks like he's going to be jumping out off the floor. I remember watching it live yelling at the TV, telling him to drop the bar because I thought he was going to get seriously hurt. But like I said, Shevikov, no quit in him, locks out the rep, gets the world record, and it's just a great moment. Come on, Shiv. Come on, let's go. Here we go, come on, he's let's playing, go. it's moving, ah. it's over the knees, come on. Ah. Come on. He's got it. The come, on, come, come on, come on, come on, lock it let's up. Go. Oh. Can he oh, fix it? He's shaking. <laughs> Good lift. Wow! wow. So at number seven, we've got Mateusz Kieliszkowski breaking his own stone-to-shoulder record. So kind of like Tom, this is a record that Mateusz already had, but he was just showing how dominant he was in this event, pushing it to a new to, to a new record. So for this event, competitors had to walk up. There was a natural stone. So like an atlas stone is perfectly round. It's smooth. It's balanced. These natural stones. They're oddly shaped, they're massive stones, and they're very unbalanced. So you really have to, again, kind of the mental side coming in, you have to figure out how the best way to lift it is. And Mateus is the best in the world at it, probably the best all time at it. He, you watch in the video, he gets it for five reps, breaking his previous record of four. He gets it for the fifth rep, and you see each time he has this great technique. He's really figured the stone out. He can move it up to his shoulder, he dips his head around perfectly, gets underneath it. Mateusz K. Leszkowski! Mateusz oh boy. should be looked at as somebody that does magic because he makes it look so easy. He was the only one who got multiple reps. Look at this! That's one! Over two minutes left! Look at that, how easily he lifts that stone! Oh my! Two! So once he gets a handhold and he easily pulls it to a lap position, it, the, the stone tends to roll to his shoulder. Three! A minute left! This is superior strength and a level of detail that we haven't seen in a long time. 52 seconds left for two reps for history. Looking to break his own record. You want to see it? Let him hear it. Let him hear it. 30 
seconds left, this big guy. 15 seconds. Let's do it. Come on. 10 seconds. You got it. Let's go, Mateusz. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and Mateusz looked pretty gassed by the end of the fifth rep, but if he had more time, as this is a timed event, so he, he just he got the final rep with one second left on the clock. If he had more time, I do believe he could have gotten a six or maybe even a seventh rep on that. The next closest competitor was Half Thor Bjornsson. You guys probably know him better from Game of Thrones. He played the mountain. Uh, he got it for three reps, and that was the next closest competitor, and he really struggled with that third rep. There probably wasn't a fourth one for Half Thor to get. Just showing how far ahead Mateus is in that event compared to all the other athletes. So in at number six is Bill Kazmaier. Bill Kazmaier was a dominant force throughout Strongman in the early 80s, actually winning World's Strongest Man three times in a row in 1980, 81, and 82. And in 1981's competition, they had this event where, I don't know why it was part of the competition, but it was actually a popular event in the late 70s and early 80s with the bar bend event where you had a steel bar and you had to bend it over across either your head, your neck, your back, and bend it as much as possible. Stupid event, a lot of injuries from it. And in that event, Bill Kazmaier actually tore his pectoral muscle and then set up the next event was the squat. So he had to do a barbell squat, which just thinking about even, I've never torn a pec, but just thinking about pulling the arm back to get set up for the squat, stretching out that pec, it had to be excruciating. Not only does Bill win the squat event, but he breaks the world record squatting 440 kilograms or 969 pounds. And you see in the video, Bill had this great way of going into a different zone than everyone else. He has these huge eyes that bug right out. He gets super intense and he just goes into this place where he, I don't think he feels anything other than what he is supposed to be doing in that moment. And to be able to just do, not just win an event, but be able to break a world record in it after having that kind of injury shows how dominant he was in the late eight, or early 80s. And now Bill Kazmaier putting his laser-like concentration to the task. 969 pounds, just under 440 kilograms. So at five is, again, Mateusz Kieliskowski. You're going to see him a couple times on this list. He's one of my favorite athletes in the sport. And this here was, I think, one of his greatest moments. At the Arnold Strongman Classics, they have a frame carry, which most competitions have a frame carry, but this one's a little bit different at the Arnold. Uh, for the frame, think of like a trap bar or a hex bar. You step inside of it, you've got handles on the side. So for this, it's just a big metal frame kind of that you have to step in, pick it up from the handles, and then run with it as fast as you can. Whoever finishes in the quickest amount of time wins. But the Arnolds, they have to carry it up a 35 foot ramp and then set onto a platform on top. And it's a very tough event. It's a very heavy frame as well. In fact, when Mateus went to go do it, he was one of the last competitors to go. And only before him, only two guys completed the event carrying the frame all the way up to the platform. Jerry Pritchett was in the lead with just over 10 seconds. And then second place, the only other guy to finish was Martins Lissis, who finished it in just over 17 seconds. So it's, as you can tell, it's a very tough event. Mateus got, got up, stood into the frame, carried it up there in seven seconds flat. And the two things that are really impressive about this is when he gets to the top, there's some bars there at the end of it so the athletes won't run off of it once they complete it. Mateus is going so fast, he's still accelerating as he's going up the ramp. He tosses the frame and actually hits the bars, bounces back at him and hits him in the legs. And the other part that's so impressive is he went head to head in this against uh, Half Thor Bjornsson, again, the mountain from Game of Thrones. And for those of you guys that don't know, Half Thor it's one of the greatest strongmen of all time. He, you could make the case that he's the strongest human to ever walk this earth. And to watch Mateus do it so easily in seven seconds, and right beside him is Half Thor, struggling to even get it up the ramp at all, dropping it multiple times. It just goes again to show the dominance Mateus has in that event. 
Friends are and up. they're off. And Kalish Koski. Oh, look at Kelly Koski go. Look at that. Oh, wow. wow. He's back. This could really change this. Oh, this can change this everything. This could change the whole contest. Oh, my. Kalish Koski. So coming in at four is the Junus Vickis, showing why he was the king of the log press. Had the 2015 Arnold Strongman Classic again. They had the Austrian Oak, which was a 205 kilogram log, huge massive log, and it also weighed in at 441 pounds, I believe. Every competitor stepped up and every competitor failed to get a single rep of this Austrian Oak until Big Z stepped up crushed it for four reps and stopped at the four reps realizing he probably had the win instead of exerting all the extra energy he saved it again kind of like the frame carry of Mateus seeing so many athletes not just struggle with it but fail at it and then to have Big Z walk up and just smash it with no with no problem whatsoever goes to show again the dominance and also the figuring out of how to lift that log because it's a massive log it's unbalanced you're uncoordinated as you get up to your chest Again, the mental part of it, figuring it out and getting it up overhead in the easiest way possible goes to show what the sport's all about. All right, at number three, we've got Mateusz Kieliskowski coming in again. This time he was at the ultimate, world's ultimate strongman competition in Dubai, and he had to do a 10 stone, a 10 atlas stone run, which is a massive one. It's the biggest one in any competition. The impressive part about it isn't the fact that he got eight stones up, which is already more than most athletes would have been able to do. He did it basically with one arm. Earlier in the competition, the event right beforehand, Mateus tore his bicep, which when it comes to Atlas Stones, I don't know if any of you guys have ever lifted and tried lifting an Atlas Stone, there's no real way to keep your biceps out of it. Your biceps play a massive part in lifting the Atlas Stone. So Mateus tore it right before this, he wraps it up, gets in there, figures out how to lift it with one arm, and managed to get eight stones. One stone is the most you should do. Out here tonight. It's the most you should do. Yes. Not two, just one. And we're off our final time tonight. Luke one. Luke two. Matthias one. Four to go. Matthias still pulling up those stones. He's not giving up. Look, let's get it, brother. Stoneman for 10 stones. He's doing this, he's doing this with one Dubai. arm. He's a nut. Brother Tommy in his ear. Stoneman and Stoneman in the house. You're watching history. Let's get it up, Luke. You get that stone on that rock. Yeah! Luke Stolman with 10 Atlas Stones and Magic. I, I can't and believe it. Times. Looking for eight. Kuliskowski, yeah, slow eight stones. Most guys would have pulled out of the competition or maybe tried to get one stone up just so they get a couple points on the board and keep themselves in good standings. Mateus, this was the last event of the competition and Mateus was in the lead when he tore his bicep. So he had to get eight stones to ensure his win. That's exactly what he did. He gritted it out. And it's just, again, it shows the toughness of these athletes. It also goes to show what a great competitor Mateus Kieliskowski is. And at two, this one could easily be number one but it's Whit Baskins, a young 21-year-old strongman in the 1999 World Strongest Man Heats. So he never made it to the finals, but in the heats, he gave us an incredible moment. They had to do a car hold. So it's, again, kind of like a trap bar. You stand into it, it's got handles on the sides. You pick it up and you have to hold it there for as long as possible. The only thing is, is there's a car attached to the back of it. So you're holding a car up in the air. Now Whit, when he walked up to do this, the leading time was 52 seconds and Witt somehow managed to hold on to this car for two minutes and 11 seconds. By the end of it, you can see his body, it almost looks like it's collapsing in on itself. His arms are stretched as far as they will possibly stretch without ripping off. Everything in him is starting to give way, and he just continues to fight through the pain, fight through all the things going on in his head, and holds on to an incredible two minutes and 11 seconds. God, these are two really tough competitors. 
Good has an added advantage of competing against the man he's chasing in the standings. There you see him staring him down. Laszlo Fekete currently second overall, trying to secure that second spot in the final. And Baskin currently in third place because they passed the 40-second barrier. Less than 10 seconds if they want to move into the lead. Both men not showing any sign of giving up. So they have done it, both men. Whit Baskin getting support from his brother, Brady, who made the trip to Malta. Fekety drops out just under a minute. Baskin's going to keep going. And go, the rookie from Oklahoma in his first appearance, putting on quite a show here. As he passes the one minute, 30 second mark kind of competition on the international level. Look at Laszlo Fekety. Even he's cheering him on. Witt has more than doubled up the time to beat of 52, 56, and he's still going. Perfect form, Todd, a straight line all the way on his shoulders. If he makes two minutes, that will be amazing. Well, Kaz, we are seeing a truly gritty performance. Todd, this is one of the most awesome performances we've ever seen in World Strongest Man competition. We thought we saw something in the truck pull, but Whit Baskin at 211.84. And he is given everything he can in this event. Courageous yet exhausted. What an effort this man put together in his World Strongest Man debut. So at number one, probably comes as no surprise for most people, but it's Eddie's 500 kilogram deadlift. So Eddie Hall already had the world record in the deadlift at 463 kilograms. This time he was taking it to a massive jump at 500 kilograms. And going into this, most people, including myself, thought 500 kilograms was impossible for a human to lift. Eddie wanted to prove everybody wrong and really show what the human body can do. Successfully lifting the 500 kilogram deadlift, it didn't come without a cost though. Eddie, after he sets the bar down, you can see the blood running from his nose. He collapses on top of the bar. He actually passes out for a little bit. He goes temporarily blind for a minute or two. I mean, I've read reports of doctors saying that he potentially gave himself a small brain aneurysm, but it just goes to show also the, the, the unreal competitor that Eddie Hall was when he was competing in the sport. You know, there was nothing that could hold Eddie back but himself. He had this great mindset. And for me, this just goes to show that we're always capable of more. Every person out there is capable of succeeding to that next level. No matter what people say or what limitations someone puts on you, Eddie burst through all of them, showing everybody that you can do whatever you put your mind to. For the half ton attempt. On the way we go! Ladies and gentlemen, yeah! Eddie Hall lifts the half ton! 500 kilograms is off the floor! 500 kilograms has been done! 500 kilograms is no longer a myth! 500 kilograms was crushed! So there you have it guys, there's my top 10 favorite moments in Strongman, the 10 moments that inspired me the most. And I hope some of you guys found something in this, maybe got inspired, maybe you want to learn more about the sport. It's a fast, rapidly growing sport. I suggest if you guys found interest in this, try digging in a little bit more, learning more about it. The more we can grow the sport, the better. And if there's any moments that you think may should have been on this list that weren't, or anything that you would change, let me know in the comments. And if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.